Kuroda Necro. You guys look at this. Kuroda playing Necro. Kuroda's attacks are concise. It's a whole lot of nothing. And then when he occasionally does something, it's very like... It's very much the right thing. You know what I mean? Rarely blocked. I wonder if he had something buffered if that low light kick was parried. Nice. Reacted to the dive kick, maybe. In every possible little way that a mix-up cannot quite be real, Kuroda's ready to like blow up the not real part. That's the beauty of it. This game has a lot of not real mix-ups. That's the beauty of it, I think. I think that's. I actually feel like that's one of the big differences between this game and Street Fighter Five. Is that even at the highest level, like I shouldn't say that. But uh, Street Fighter V has a lot of very real mix-ups and not a lot of not real... Well, I sh it does have a lot of not real mix-ups, I suppose. But there's a way to defend yourself near perfectly in this game, despite the fact that the rushdown is very overpowered. Which I feel like there isn't in V. It's more mathematically program... It's more mathematically, like, possible to just put together a perfect offense in V. Obviously part of it is that you can't attack without taking a risk at all in this game. There is a way to blow up everything. That's a no that's no small plot piece. Kurt Necro, Kazuya Alex. This is actually one of my favorite Alex players. He's probably my second favorite after Genki. He's got a really unique play of w way of playing. Play of weighing. And he's real good. He's one of the best Alex players I've ever seen. In particular, his charging is, I think, better than most Alex players. Most Alex players don't really worry about that that much. Jump drills and mix up with throw. That dizzy. Classic Alex. Take a throw, immediate EX slash elbow. EX slash elbow has a nice hitbox coming in, so it'll usually beat stuff, and it's safe. Safe against everything except, like, Ken Super. So it's very like easy to just kind of be reckless with it, just throw it out. I'd actually really miss that. That's one of the things I feel like Alex is really missing in Street Fighter Five. That being said, Alex without a reversal would be even weaker than he is. So like the fact they made it to a reversal, it would have to be. It would have to be. Uh, the fact that it has armor means it would have to be safe, or else it would be really stupid. That was a bit strange. That doesn't really do any chip or anything like that. Gotzi Nermini. Gotzi Nermini. I suppose. The how passive he plays. You might think that you're supposed to play Necro super passive, and you're not fully wrong. Wow. Empty jump, stand short. It looked like Kuroda got hit out of a low parry, but low parry should work against Stan Short. You can low parry standing light normals. So I'm guessing um, it, he got hit out of a crouching attack. No counter hit notification in this game because there's no counter hits in this game. Mm. It's annoying to get out of tick throws in this game. Most tick throws end your momentum immediately. And in order to get out of a tick throw, you have to open yourself up to stuff that's worse than a tick throw. So most people just hold tick throws. It sounds weird, but that's how people play. Very nice. Can Alex really not punish that? Hit the red parry.
Random EX slash double is very common. EX slash double also combos from mediums. Ooh. Alex doesn't have anything at all that combos from lights. Like, literally nothing. He has one thing that combos from lights. It's super 2. Not even super 1 or super 3. They're both throws. Super 2 is literally the only thing Alex has. Combo from light normals. Which is okay, because his light combos in general are really shit, so you don't really miss... You know, you can't really combo into a light at all. You can combo two... You can chain two jabs. That's about it. Taro, this is one of the best Urians. Every character in this game has nice animations. Except Elena's crouch. Elena's three frame crouch, or three. What do you call that? Well, yeah, I guess three frame. Three animation crouch. Necro has nice elasticity in his attacks. You can kind of see it. Uh, if you look at the attacks frame by frame, you can see like the limbs get wider as they snap out. They get like wider and skinnier, and um, you know they'll like they'll snap out and snap back. It's hard to describe. They look like they're made out of like rubber or something like that. His animations do a nice job showing off that he's like got kind of an elastic structure. That's hard to punish. I wouldn't be surprised if he had to like land into it, parry, and then immediately EX tackle, which would have been a nightmare to even do. That's over. Can't win now. I've looked at the Cop Cup roster I think once. Oof. Look at that. Look at that animation. That animation of Necro taking a tackle to the chest. Makoto is a really nice little case study of how perfect their animation is. Because Makoto stains like a fucking stone. No part of her body moves, even a fucking pixel. But her clothes animate. It gives the impression that she's got like perfect form. Ugh. I think uh, back strong is a little worse at comboing into uh, spin knuckle than back forward. Push back. TM goes straight for the the taunt. Another one. That was a probably a failed dash in back strong. I don't know. It's a weird thing to do. Back strong would have been better button to hit there. Less vulnerable to a parry, more likely to actually pick up the punish and lead to full combos instead of not leading the combos. So probably an actual genuine mistake from Kuroda. This is three taunts Q, so Q actually has generously more health than Necro right now. That being said, um, it does percentage of health for time overs. And Q is missing more total health. So, um... Uh, it's good for Kuroda if he can run the clock. I wouldn't even be mad if he made it. So jump strong. No, it's not. It might be jump fierce. Jump strong comes down at like a 45 degree angle. Nice. Uh, TM's now in this. This is now hard for him to lose. Even if Kuroda gets a bunch of hits, he's got a lot of health to remove because this is 3 taunts Q.
Corella has to stay close enough that he can punish a taunt. Tim's being more careful about taunts because this time uh, Necro has super. That's the main factor. Raw super will punish a taunt. He does a lot of damage and a lot of dizzy. Oof. <laughs> With throw into parry. That's oh, over. Huh? He had a dizzy combo. I guess he had to burn a super. He chose not to burn a super. I would have burned that super. 100 times out of 100 against TM. Kirky, no! It's my last day of my Christmas break. I was going to be productive today, but I just couldn't find the willpower. That's going to beat it. That super is not invincible on startup. It can trade favorably, but it can lose clean. And I think it was going to lose clean against the universal overhead. No, it's not cold in California ever. It's like 70 here. California goes, where I live in SoCal, goes between 70 and 100. It's never higher, it's never lower. Ouch. Believe it or not, that is a confirm. And now this is really hard. This is like almost impossible. There it is. How about you? Yeah, I saw heating costs in Canada. Looks like shit. It's like the one thing they get you with. Heating your house. Canada's cold. Even the seaside in Canada. Shit like Vancouver. Frigid all the time. You gotta be careful with that overhead, it's a reaction parry. Reuse X Tatsu looks real scary in a game with parrying. It's like, how do I parry this? But it's like, dot, dot, dot. It's only three hits. It doesn't pull you all around if it only hits on the front. Or rather, if you parry it, it doesn't pull you to the back hits. Normally five hits, but two of them are on the back. <laughs> Some characters you can only get stand strong there. Some characters you can get down back fierce. Down back face is harder, so a lot of necros just go for stand strong all the time, but it depends on what you're trying to do. <laughs> Did you know that in most of the US, um, riding an ambulance costs like $100 a minute?
You could just get an Uber, and in fact, places where they have Ubers um, see dramatically. Places with better Uber stuff see dramatically less ambulance. It's shitty. It's shitty that it's that expensive. The entire medical system is so fucked here. It's not even the kind of fucked where you can like get into it and be part of the problem like most capitalist shit is. It's not like your life even because it's not like you even like get fat stack stacks unless you're like a super good specialist doctor. It's not like you can just go work for a fucking medical insurance company and suddenly become rich. Most of the rackets in the US you can just become part of the problem. You have to like own a fucking medical insurance company in order to be one of the fat cats. My mom works in a hospital and she gets real nice medical insurance and until very recently I was on her medical insurance. And um... It was... It was good. We didn't pay very much at all. For anything. I had some pill, dude. There was some pill I needed. I forget what it was. It might have been an acid reducer or something like that. It might have been like some... Not Prolisec, but something else. But like, they gave me a, a prescription for it. And it was like 70 bucks. And I was like, oh... And then I showed them my fucking doctor's, my prescription... I showed them my insurance card. Nice. This is, um... This is, uh, the best Remy. Piero. That's his new name. Um... And then I was paying, like... Like, 30 cents per pill. Or something like that. I ended up being, like, $2 for the whole thing. Okay, it wasn't 30 cents per pill, it was less than that. It was, like, $2. It went from, like, $70 to 2 for like a fucking packet of pills. It's too expensive to get sick. That's why I get the flu shot every year. Got my inoculations. Union stuff isn't doing very well in the U.S. either. Although, to be quite honest, I think um, it's going to come back within my lifetime. Union stuff is right about to get real popular, I think. Jump strong. I don't know what the hell that name means, Remy. The third one is God, Sheen. Kami. That's max damage without super. Didn't quite kill. He maybe should have burned the bar. But probably not. I mean, he's not a comeback character. My work gives me uh, flu shots for free. I don't even have like a job that has anything to do with flu. It's just good for them if I don't get sick. Blue shots aren't expensive though. I 
Honestly, nothing you can do at Walmart is expensive. Uh oh. That was probably... I don't know. I feel like Remy can flash kick that. I don't know what Necro's Super 3 is on block. I thought it was unsafe. It definitely depends on the range. It becomes really safe from far away. Because it travels farther. It takes longer before it hits you. Necro has more time to recover. And just punishing long distances is harder. Yamakofu. Very good Dudley player. <laughs> I'm a little better now, but I used to suffer from really low blood pressure. And there was a time when I went to a hospital and they had to draw blood. And I couldn't fill up the vial for like how much they needed for their test. Like they found the vein and they fucking stuck me. And it filled like halfway and then like stopped. And I was like, can you re-stick me? And they're like, no, the we can't just like reuse the same needle. And we can't like attach a different needle to the bag or something like that. So they had to try again. And I think they tried again and couldn't fill it either. And both of those were out of my elbow. Oh, they really struggled to find a vein too. Like they were like fucking tapping around all, the, all over the place. I think I got H1N1. I got like the swine flu. 2009. That was the year I was like, no more flu ever. Well, I've drawn for the first time. What have you been doing all your life? Are you like an unregistered person? Are you like the child of sovereign citizens? How do you go your whole life without getting blood drawn? What the fuck? Did you never get to the doctors as a kid? Even if I was healthy, they took my blood once a year. Just to see what was up. Or are you talking about like donated blood? I never donate blood to be honest. My blood isn't even that good. I made positive. I think they need, they need like O negative and O positive failing that and they prefer negative to positive and they prefer O to other blood types. My blood can only be given to other A positive people and maybe like um, AB positive people I think. Oof. Genki! That matchup's more fair than you might think. Alex versus Necro is like, I think, moderately even.
Note the double parry into nothing. Necro's drill just creates an anti-air scenario, but it's two parries instead of one. But like, you can hit him mid-air before he lands. Spooker said something to me. Let's read it on stream. Hi. Maybe he's gonna ask me for games. I found an infinite, check it out. Alright, we're gonna check out the infinite that Spooker sent me. Actually, it might be a nuisance trying to get this on stream. I let LP Armor Piercer in Time Stone is fast enough to indefinitely prolong an OTG hit. <laughs> Lit! That is a lit, that is a lit infinite. I gotta hit that with a retweet. Alright everyone, if you couldn't see that very well, here's the link. Where were we? That's a stupid looking infinite. I mean, it's not an. No, there's a lot of time stone infinites. I shouldn't say a lot, but there are some. Back fierce getting beaten clean by Chun Li Stomp. Delete. Awkward. This is I think no, this is this is I think this one's okay. I mean it's bad, but it's like it's not Necro's worst, I don't think. I think Yun's Necro's worst. I think this is like seven this is like six four, seven three. It's probably like six point five, three point five. It's bad for Necro, but it's not like it's not like he's just invalidated. Oof. You gotta be smart though, because Necro Chun Li super punishes a lot of Necro's buttons. So you have to not hit those buttons once Chun Li gets the super. It's not not a good look, but it's not so bad. You get follow ups on Chun Li. Lala confirm is basically a mix up with throw. Add in um instant air, dive kick, and you get another layer. Alright, if Chun Li didn't punish with reversal super on that, then you probably have no punish. Chun Li doesn't really nice. Chun Li doesn't really have good answers for Necro's stomps in general. I uh, not stomp, what do you call that? The drill kick. They're low risk, low reward. Tominaga. Throws can be a punish after an anti air parry, but it's very precise. And sometimes not available, depending on when the guy in midair par uh, attacks. Like if you do a deep attack and Makoto does anti-air parry into Karakusa, you might be able to land and jump before she actually gets her grab off. Basically, you can time your attacks midair in such a way that punishes don't be aren't possible. Punish grabs. Yes, Yun would still be top if he didn't have Gane. He wouldn't be number one. But Yun's other supers are extremely stupid. It's not like Gane is like his best super by far, although it is his best super.
Young Super 2 is basically... Um, Young Super 2, this is Kota Hugo. Young Super 2 is basically Ken Super 3 in terms of distance and punishing power. It's a little bit harder to confirm because he doesn't have like overhead into it. Or he does, but it's specific. But he's got a command grab into it and he's got like lows into it. He's got nice confirms. Take my word for it. And then um, Super 1 is also as easy to confirm. But uh, it's basically... It's Q Super 2, but more confirmable. It leads to like as high of damage. Yun, is, Yun has three good supers. The Ken super is like the worst one. Wow. Reminder to everyone who doesn't play this game that much, this is um, Hugo's worst matchup. Alongside Chun Li, usually regarded as eight twos, very horrible. Dudley fights Hugo well. Oh, that was not a combo. You can, I think you can. No, it depends. You have to do like a high connect jump hard kick and land super to punish that super from Hugo, I think. I don't know, probably not. Probably just missed it. I don't know, he's still got... Yum without super is... I would say Yum without super is still better than Yang. Yum without Gene, I should say. And Yang's just pushing. Yang's like just outside top top five. Like, the light punch, light kick, medium punch is, like, better than, like, 80% of the shit Yang has. Kota Oro again. Murakami, Japanese last name. Not a combo, but can be. Pairing that is like worse than not pairing it. I don't, I never go for that ender. There's a trick. Alright, time out. Let's, let's observe the trick. Um, stand strong, two hits, crutch fierce. Normally this is, stand strong two hits into crutch fierce is a JP5, okay? Necro's at JP5 right now. He's, that's pretty high. He can only be hit a few more times before he falls down and becomes invincible. So this super would only hit probably like twice, maybe three times on Necro. But because he parried, he resets himself to JP0, okay? If you do an air parry in the middle of a, if you air parry a reset to super, um, you can be reset. For step one, you can be reset to supers in this game. Um, even if you, like, air resets your invincible to everything until you hit the ground, except supers. Supers can still hit you, but you can parry them. So this is an air reset into a super. Um, he would get hit a few times and then fall out. And if he fell out, um, it would be okay, because Aura wouldn't have a juggle after this super. And also, Aura has no EX fireball to do, so he has no, like, tricky mix up. He just has his regular ass Oki. Um,. But he parries, which is arguably a completely horrible decision right here. Definitely not worth. Uh, very hard to actually parry your way to the ground. Very difficult. Not worth. Um, fast enough moves can combo. Fast enough moves can combo before they get a reset, yeah. But they don't combo after an air reset. 
but things that are supposed to cause air reset fast enough moves can still hit them and interrupt the air reset before it can happen. It's weird. Anyway, um, so once this super, every time this super hits, it adds JP1. So he goes to zero because he parries. This is five. Back to zero. Okay, that he got hit by two hits and then the roundhouse. And then that was two hits and then the, the roundhouse is one as well. And it was super roundhouse super. So he's the roundhouse should air reset him, but the super was the last hit and the super uh, hit before the roundhouse could air reset. So that is three, okay. And then he walks up and does stand strong into stomp. So that's four into five. And then he does the uppercut there. So basically, if he had more of that super hit, that ender, that uppercut would have whiffed. That was like the absolute limit for the uppercut. The uppercut, if it's JP6, that uppercut will whiff. If Necro missed a parry, that juggle wouldn't have been possible. If Necro did one parry instead of uh, two. So he saw that Necro parried twice, and he did that combo based on that. That's why I don't usually do that juggle there. That's why I usually just let them... I usually make them land on a hard kick and then be done with it. He got slightly more damage by recognizing a slightly more optimal punish. Based on the number of parries in the JP. It sounds all complex now that I'm explaining it, but like if you've been in that scenario, it'll be the same next time you're in that scenario. You know what I mean? That's the Crota setup. This setup does not mind if you... Uh, high parry gets out, but it's a mix-up with low parry. In the Crota setup. And it doesn't, the setup still works whether the opponent quick stands or not. That's the real glory of the Crota setup. Is that you have to do a very, very specific combo to make it so the opponent can't quick stand with the other infinites, but with the Crota style infinite. Koro. With the Crota style infinite, you don't, you don't care about the quick stand, which lets you get it from a few more scenarios. That was a car throw. Good as a god. Who does fucking car throw on reaction to a forward dash? Um, I don't know. Man of Gold might have some. I'm the guide. You don't need a bunch. You only need one per character. It can help to have a couple because it can be harder to parry out if you've got a few different ones you can do. But mm, there are only like there are only a few people in the world, if even, who can reliably parry out, even at the very highest level of play. So they're basically f effectively combos. That can be their overhead or low. Oh no! I've made that drop. He got a really far away stand strong. No matter how far away it is, you can always do a walk in stand strong. That's always possible, but it gets more and more precise the more far away you are. It's always like three frames of leniency. But if you're really far away, it can go down to like one frame of leniency, which naturally makes it very difficult. Aro actually has an extremely jank infinite where he can get. He can be just the right distance away that he only gets one hit of stand strong instead of two, which only happens at the absolute max range of close stand strong. Any further, it turns into far stand strong. And you can walk to that exact range six times in a row and get the first hit of stand strong six times in a row. It looks really stupid. It's like the secret aura loop. Did I call it an infinite? It's not infinite. It's just an aura juggle. Once you get to six, it still ends. Look at that dizzy bar. Remy's dizzy bar is tied for shortest with Akuma. Remy doesn't have super low health. It's low-ish. It's the same as Oro. But um, uh, the balance around him is that if you actually catch him and pre pressure on him, he'll get dizzy quickly. But to be honest, he doesn't really need that because he's not that hard to catch. Or rather, it really depends on the matchup. He is kind of hard to catch. 
But um, some characters can do it really easily and some can't. I've played this matchup quite a lot and I can safely say that Remy's zone against Oro is not that bad. I would call it probably a 6.5, 3.5 in Oro's favor. Ugh. Although I would be moderately willing to accept that it's either a 7 or a 6. Yes, Captain here you are now my team. The swap has happened. Cat hear you power. There's a new bath for a new era. Car throw. Aura makes a noise when he does a car throw because he always makes a noise on the first frame of his stand hard kick. And hard kick is the main car throw normal. You basically have to treat unblockables as a combo. This game is good. Credit setup. He had to do that's a setup. That's a good example of a, a setup where there was no normal unblockable because he was in the wrong screen position. Nice, this is dead. How are you not going to do the command grab? What the fuck? Low shorts weren't a bad idea, but he was so far away that they actually whiffed. This game, the unblockables in this game work because um, if they were functionally a combo, it wouldn't change, or rather, it wouldn't be stupid. Um, I don't like Iron Man with power at all, but I just like Strider. And I don't think Cap and Iron Man actually have that good of synergy, from what I can tell. I don't know. They might. It's kind of weird to change both my characters, I guess, huh? Despite the fact that, ooh, he went for uh, Alex Struggle. Um, despite the fact that uh, Iron Man was definitely my better character back then, and despite the fact that, um, how do I say this? Despite the fact that Cap is my better character, now, or despite the fact that, yeah, despite the fact that Cap is my better character now, I'm I'm more. I'd rather play Strider Iron Man than Cap Iron Man. I'm more dedicated to having Strider on my team than having Cap on my team. I mean, theoretically, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do with Cap, like while the opponent's blocking a Beam Super. To be honest, Beam Super into low overhead is something that I don't know how to do with uh, Cap or Strider. You can do Beam Super into Cap into uh, what do you call it? Uh, cartwheel. That's good, but that doesn't work on cornered opponents. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think Cap can get behind a cornered opponent with Cartwheel. He might be able to. But it's still kind of hard because Cap tags into wherever Iron Man is. So you've got to be moderately close and you've got to do a raw, unprotected Iron Man super. And you've got to tag in Cap and then be able to tell, uh, to cartwheel in such a way that you would actually go behind them. That's the 50-50, but he didn't get the combo. Your juggle potential is gone. Ooh. Could have probably motioned the wrong way. If you do a regular Oniyama, there's no juggle potential. That was a punish. Good lord, what a perfect punish. That was amazing. Higa. This is one of the better Ibuki players who still plays. He's very, um... How do you say? I wouldn't call him passive, per se. He's very pick-and-choose. He's, he, like, waits for... He waits for very particular opportunities. He's He wins through attrition. He wins very slowly. I guess that would make him passive. Define an infinite. Aura has unblockable leaps against Alex. Kota went for them. They were just minor drops. Aura's infinite is moderately hard. And he went for a hard version of it.
Oof. This will possibly kill. It's going to be close. Oh, he dropped it. He did a uh, max damage struggle, which is hard to do. That absolutely 110% should have been Kunai into super. Wow. What is this? <laughs> he goes just like, yo, I got the life lead. Um, I could, if you care. I don't use Super 2 against every character. The main thing you need to know is which Super to use against which character. You can always use heavy on Dudley. You have to use light on Makoto, um, Makoto and Yurian, and I think Chun Li. And then with every other character, use medium. But personally, I use heavy against Twelve and Necro because there's and Alex because there's a little setup you can do against them. Super 2 against Hugo has an infinite loop, but it's really impractical. So people usually just use the Super 2 to badger. You don't need, like, I don't know. The badgering is really good with Super 2, and the infinite is really bad with Super 2 against Hugo. So you don't really use Super 2 in the same way you use it in any other matchup. You use it more like an actual projectile. Oh, that charging. Oh. That's probably jump out into whoa. Ex Nightbreaker punishes fireballs if done at the same time, but it's a hard read that most people don't fuck around with because predicting fireballs is way too hard in this game. Right now. Oro can punish that, but he went for a mix-up instead. <laughs> the mix-up is not... The punish is not great. You can punish it with far stand forward from that range. Nice. Kurota set up for the screen position. There it was. Very nice punish. He saw the Ryu dash in and he just low parried. Clean. The big thing about Kuroto is that he's more ready for dashes than any other player. You can see that in his game. He puts himself at a very particular range where if you dashed, he knows what you would do. Based on like where you would be at the end of your dash. And most people aren't ready for that. Most people are like, I'm going to dash and then I'm going to do something like the best possible thing for me after my dash and they'll be struggling to react to my dash, let alone my new range. But Kuroda's considering the new range and the options there. Kuroda's like, Ryu's this far away. I've noticed this before. Ryu's this far away. If I stand here and he dashes in, he'll be able to hit me with lows but not highs. And it'll probably be low forward or low highs, which have similar start up. Shinku's 5 hits, Oro Super is 4. So if Ryu destroys a fireball with um, Shinku, there's 1 hit left. I think Necro, I mean Necro, what the heck. Um, what's the Super 3? Denjin. Denjin, uh, I think Denjin fully destroys an Oro Super, but it needs to be a certain number of hits. It might be like 2, more 3. 
And I think the Denjin will keep going through. Denjin's got like unusual properties uh, when interacting with other fireballs. It like drills through them without losing hits. This is match. Nice punish. Oh, that would have... Ooh, that's dizzy. Wow. It's really scary when you've got an EX Fireball from Moro coming at you. Teleport? Nope. Teleport was almost certainly the play there. But I know why I didn't go for it. Both Dive Kick and Air Tatsu will beat um, Jump Hard Kick from Moro most of the time, or Stand Hard Kick. Ooh. He's trying really... He couldn't teleport there because Aura was hanging back. Aura could have just like punished his uh, teleport with a chicken combo. So he had to like super out or just block the super. Blocking the super was definitely the play. Kimono Michi. I don't even know what you mean. Oh no. It's very tempting when Aura does that setup to do an OS parry, block one way parry the other way, because Aura can end up on either side and do a stand strong, which leads to a full combo. So at the highest level, Auras often do that reset and then dash in and land on either side and do a low forward, which beats the OS parry regardless of which direction they go for it. And also, if they just try and block, it'll beat whatever block direction they do half the time. But they can just low parry, but low parry is a bit suicidal there because you might eat either a grab or a uh, stand strong, both of which will, you know, beat low parry. Basically, Aura has a pretty good little scenario there. I don't like it. That was a punish, I think. Makoto's movement isn't that great, but Tominaga was fortunately for him already moving over. Did someone delete that man? We've been getting a lot of those lately. Damn, that sounds pretty good. This can actually kill. He's doing the Crota setup here. I wouldn't do that here. He lost his ability to loop by going for the setup there. He had plenty of screen. That was arguably a mistake. I should get Nightbot. That can be a combo, but it's hard. I think he got a nice deep jump medium kick. Yep. Low forward. Low short, low forward. That kind of block string is really awful. Well, it's not that bad. Oro can't do, like, Oro can't chain any buttons. Oro doesn't have chaining lights or anything. So the best he can do from a low is nothing. So combos like, uh, I should say combos, pressure sequences like low short, low forward are just because uh, fishing for high parries during block strings is very good for the opponent. And that's like the worst aura can do against them. There's a lot of times in this game that you have to go for stuff that's not good, but it's good because it blows up the... It's a counter to something that, like, the opponent would do against your good thing.
Let's get punish. Walk in, stand fierce. I think you can parry the first hit of. I think you can cancel the first hit of stand fierce into Rekka, but um, the whole point of using stand fierce at all in that kind of context is to um, have two hits that are very, very close together, and doing one hit into Rekka slows it down. If Oro parries the first hit of stand fierce and then does stand strong, the second hit of stand fierce will come up before the stand strong can. Whereas he can parry the first suit of Stand Fierce and then hit Stand Strong before Rekka can come out. However, Oro or any character can parry the first suit of Stand Fierce and then throw, and the throw will come out in time. Throws are fast. The throw could actually punish in such a way that Yang would be unable to cancel it, I think. Grab him before the cancelable frames. Because it adds punish frames and it's uh, 8. No, is that how it works? It's like 8 punish frames for a light, 6 punish frames for a medium, 4 punish frames for a heavy, 2 punish frames for a uh, special move, and 0 punish frames for a super. So if you parry a light normal, you've got however long it takes the light normal to recover, which is going to be nearly instant, plus 8 additional frames because it was a light. It just makes it so it's more consistent to have, like, you know, punishable windows. But to be 100% honest, it probably should be, like, at least 2 frames for a super as well. That way you'd be able to parry one hit of Chun-Li's uh, landing leg super, and then interrupt it without having to parry the whole thing. But, you know, the, reason, the fact that I didn't do that is the reason we have moment 37. But also the fact that we don't have that is why Chun-Li is so stupid. Even moment 37 happened because the game has bad balance. And because someone managed to say, fuck your bad balance. I can overcome bad balance just by being a sick player. It's like a perfect storm, moment 37. I mean, obviously, it's been analyzed to death, but I think I've got an angle that most people don't really think about. It's a scenario where you knew that you would be in it. That's why it worked so well. That's why it was perfect. There's going to be a moment, you know, where it's just like Chun-Li's really, really dominant in this game, and this is a crazy hard parry, but I'm going to be put into a scenario where Chun-Li's going to try and chip me out with this. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen frequently. So even though it's like a mind-bogglingly hard parry, you can have that kind of guy, like Daigo, like a lot of Japanese pros, who are just like, I'm going to practice this punish. And that way, maybe I'll be able to get it in a real match when it happens. It's like really hard, but you know it's going to happen. There aren't that many scenarios like that anymore, I feel. Not in Street Fighter, anyway. Nice, MC jump low. And uh, max damage struggle on Shadows. Kitagawa. Kita is probably north. Gawa is probably river. Characters like that are very common in names.
Nice. Dead Strike is full of that kind of scenario where there's like a very... You can find like a hyper-specific proper thing to do in a scenario. And you can actually go for it to like, you know, make things a little bit better for you. You can go for red parry on second hit of two hit overheads. We'll block the whole thing. That was a bit way weird of a low strong. It might have been an uppercut that he just messed up or something. Low strong is not a weird, not a common thing to do there. Even if you're trying for a reset there, better buttons to hit. Nice. Pushed Ken out of the fireball. So it controlled the screen longer. Oh. Back throw, that was a mistake. Kurota might have been Kurota might have forgotten about that. <laughs> That's an easy thing to forget about. But then again, Kroda's an expert. Um, there's a little quirk with Ken and Shotos. I mean, Ch Oro and Shotos. Nice. He realized, I think he realized he threw the f EX Fireball at the wrong range and then saved it with a throw. And Ken didn't recognize that it was the wrong range. Because he's not Oro. Um, I recognized it was the wrong range. But I play Oro. Um, if you, normally Oro can't jump over Shotos in the corner. But if he back throws them into the corner, they're facing the wrong way. And then he can jump over them. Or I can always jump over Rekuma. But uh, Ken, Ryu, and Sean, you normally can't jump over. Nice. That's the optimal punish. Anyway, uh, Kuroda jumped over uh, Ken and then immediately threw a fireball from point blank, which was some wacky charging. And it was either purely accidental wacky charging, or he was caught off guard that he was on the side he was on. I mean, it's possible that Yon just moves during his taunt, I guess. Max damage. Very high meter build too. Except for that jab. That's an unblockable. That's a regular ass setup. Nice. Man, when you're Nuki and you get perfected by an oil player. Q can't duck to avoid a throw, Q can rise to avoid a throw. Q in his transition from um, crouching to standing is unthrowable. And what's especially weird is that he's actually airborne, so you can hit him with air throws. Oops, how did I open this? I'm not really sure how this opened, guys. Oh shit, who's that? Remember him? Who? Puerto Rican Balrog? <laughs> I thought Shahai would be playing Kami. Oh my god. EX dash punch works does a fireball punish from better from more ranges than um than headbutt. That also requires a more common charge. Man, if you told me like a long time ago, if you told me in like 2015, 
In Street Fighter V, Barog counter hit stand hard punch will knock the opponent over. I would have been like, wow, that's a really cool idea. He did the safe overhead. He didn't want to get lit up if it was blocked. But because of that, he didn't have a kill combo. Bawa can either have an overhead that's safe on block, or he can have one that leads to combos. They're very hard to spot the difference, too. You could call it a buff. He used to be able to combo out of all of them. They used to all be unsafe. But now he's got a choice. But you've got to do the heavy one if you want combos, which takes a little bit longer to hit, so it's a little bit of a nerf, too. It just changes him, but the way it changes him is kind of cool. PR Rock has famously said that he thinks Balrog does really well against Kemi. I shouldn't say really well, but he's always defended that it's like a good match. Not good, it's like 5-5 at least. I don't know about Balrog versus Evil Ryu. It's probably also 5-5 to be real. Watch out for that ultra. Watch out for that ultra. Oh, ultra will kill here. Walk in, stay in hard kick. That's a punish. That is a punish. I feel like the thing about Evil Ryu is that Light Tatsu DP is fun as fuck to hit. Like, people talk about, like, the balance of Evil Ryu and shit like that. But let's be real here, like, that's just a fun combo to do. I feel like that's something people don't talk a lot about. Combos that are fun to hit. Akuma combos are fun to hit. Evil Ryu has Akuma combos. That's good. Super is a little bit better at going through fireballs than Ultra is. It's got a little bit more invincibility, and I think a little bit more reach too. And it never falls out. Although, Ultra usually doesn't fall out as of USF4. Um, but both of them were going to kill, so it didn't matter which one he did. So Super was the better play. Very nice punish. He had no charge, but he had a three frame, uh, an opportunity to get that three frame jab out, and he wanted to make that three frame jab hurt. Very unusual little combo. Well, it's not unusual, but you know, it's cool that charge characters are cool because they they do stuff like that. They make uh, considerations based on a resource that most people don't, that other characters don't have to think about. One frame link. Dropped another one frame link. I think he was probably going to sweep. He just dropped it. Oof. That could have been a little higher damage, but not way higher. This could still go either way. Wow, looks scary. Zhao Hai's... I was about to say Zhao Hai has to not do those. Oh, it didn't work. He was too far away. He did the straight one, and the up one wasn't going to reach, and the straight one wasn't going to hit in time. The up one's faster. So it's just not, not the right range to go for that. If he did it raw ultra, it probably would have worked. If you did raw ultra, he wouldn't have needed to wait for the fireball to reach him. But if you're going to armor cancel, you need to you need to wait for the fireball to get close enough that you can cancel, you can car the first frame. It was a fancy thing to do. But it would be better on a character with a worse fireball. Reuse fireball is okay, and I think Evil Reuse is about the same in terms of startup and recovery. Ooh. That is such a choke. That's not even a different motion than Kami. That's down forward, down forward kicks. Got no excuses. 
I think I know what it was. He tried to do a walk ultra because he was really far away. But he had a lot of time. The motion for that is uh, down forward, down forward, hold forward a little bit, and then do kick. But his motion, he was just not expecting a, a, a connect, I think, a counter hit. That was like low-key a mistake. Time out. Right here. He starts charging a focus, and then uh, Xiao Hai jumps over. Right here, um, what are Balrog's options? He can backdash, and Evil Ryu can punish that on reaction. He can forward dash, and Evil Ryu can punish that on reaction. Let's say low forward for both punishes. Or he can release, and low forward can punish it on reaction. Okay? So Evil Ryu, all he has to do is wait. Okay? Watch for the dash, and then hit it. Okay? What Evil Ryu should do right now is literally hold right and walk Balrog into the corner. Okay? And then as soon as he sees a dash, he hits, like, let's say Stain Fierce. He hits Stain Fierce. And, um. Uh. Uh, cancels to light Tatsu or something like that. Okay, just like hold to the right, watch for anything. Stand strong would be a little bit more consistent, maybe. Um, and then do like button into light Tatsu into DP, and he it's a punish on everything Balrog can do, and uh, he's got the corner and he's got damage and whatever. But what he does instead is he does immediate stand fierce. I wasn't that wasn't the one. No, that was the one. He does immediate stand fierce and uh. Balrog's backdash gets lets him get away. He had to anticipate that dash. And not attacking midair was the better play. Actually it probably didn't matter if he attacked midair or not. But like he had to expect the dash in that direction because that was Balrog's only thing he could do. Low four was probably what I would have done. I've been in that scenario uh, a decent amount. And I usually get the punish there. Jumping over someone who... If, that's a scenario is good to be ready for. If you ever jump over someone who's focusing, always just walk towards them. And then wait for the dash and punish the dash. Yun. What is this? This Canada Cup Master Series thing ended up being some of the best Street Fighter 4 I ever saw in the lifespan of this game. This plus like all the Capcom Cups were probably the highest level footage I ever saw. Dude, don't even say those words in that order. Remember when Daka was a DJ player? If you get an anti-air level 2 or level 3 focus attack, it's a free juggle state. And level 2 knocks the opponent down almost immediately, but anti-air level 3 um, causes a like a big old... like. Launch, I guess. Ooh. Grab the armor. I thought Xiao Hai was the chosen one! That's like almost an Iori combo. Look at all these fierces. Remember when Balrog's reversals were considered, like, low-end? Anyone remember that? There's no character with reversals anywhere near as good as Balrog in Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter V. Balrog's reversals are like low-end, but versatile. Yeah, they're all slow.
I was thinking recently that if they only did, if they made no other changes to like the the existing throw meta game of Street Fighter 4, and they just made it so throws weren't a hard knockdown, I feel like that would have fixed almost everything. Yeah, what up, homie? Why does he not have that? That's something they should not have given Yun, I feel. EX Command Grab with much better reach than uh, non-EX Command Grab. He didn't have any EX Command Grab in Street Fighter 3. And Yun with a big range Command Grab is just something that shouldn't be, I feel. It's like the... it's... it's... there's a reason he didn't have that. It's like not... it's too strong on his kind of character. It's too anti what his character is supposed to be. So I played mostly Kami and Iryu, but more Kami than Iryu, I think. Wasn't even the best character. What does that mean? Yun wasn't the best character. I mean, I guess not. He was like top three. Or at the very least top five. How are you going to say, oh, like, it's not a problem because he's not number one? Shit, dude, look at fucking, look at Dan. Don't even look at Dan, look at Goken, okay? Go look at Goken. Give Goken a fucking EX command grab. It'd be kind of interesting if Goken had a command grab, actually. Now that I'm saying that. Um, I wouldn't put... I don't know. Yon had more success than Seth in the, in the lifespan of Ultra. Oof. I feel like Goken should have had a command grab like... Um, like Q's. And he should have just had a regular ass back throw. Like they should have taken his back throw and just made it a command grab and then given him a regular back throw. I feel like that's what they should have done. Four matchups. I can think of Geef. Who am I forgetting? I don't think Yun loses to Elena. I don't think Yun loses to Evil Ryu. I don't think Yun loses to like T-Hawk or Hakan. Hugo I can see. I can buy, I can buy Geef and Hugo. Maybe Khan. I don't know enough about Hakan to say that one, but I wouldn't say T-Hawk. Nice. Elena. It's weird. Yana's yeah, like one of Elena's worst matchups, but it might be fair. <laughs> it might just be that Elena beats everyone else. But of all the ca when I played Elena a lot, and of all the characters I dreaded seeing on my opponent's screen, Yum was like top top three worst matchups for Elena.
go find a bunch of um let's go find a bunch of snake eyes versus uh Kazunoko. They've probably played at least at least a few times. You unbeat Geef. Good lord. Japan doesn't have snake eyes though. Now I need to see this. I think everyone fought everyone in this tournament, right? It's around Robin. Um, Snake's in this weird position, I feel, because um, well, he probably just hates Street Fighter V, like uh, a lot of old pros. But... Um, uh, Ooh. I haven't seen Snake like a whole lot in Street Fighter V since uh, Season 1, where Geef was bad. Air quotes bad. The next bath cup. Bath cups are on Thursdays. I can't foresee any reason we're not going to have one next Thursday. Or are you asking about an AE, uh Street Fighter V bath cup? <laughs> no! PR Rog! That wasn't even that close. I still see a little tiny sliver of red. <laughs> Bath cups have always been Thursdays. Literally since they started. Kind of weird to think that I've been doing a bath cup approximately every Thursday for like years now. There actually weren't that many young players even in AE. I can literally think of Daigo Kazunoko and no other people doing well with him. And in terms of people who picked him up as a pocket character, I can't think of that many people either. Like, who's everyone? I don't remember him. He was never popular online. He's one of the least popular characters online. Any character that has a perception of being um, difficult typically sees, like, no, no online play. Momochi on. Was that who was playing in AE? King Devers played every dive kick character. I forgot about him. I don't know if I'd call. I don't know if I'd say that King Devu has like a main. Zhen Yun, what? That was a thing. I don't remember that at any event. Ooh, that's the one. That's like the best reversal. But it's the most risky. You burn a bar and you can't make it safe. Please don't drop this. This will not kill. Overall, it's about the game 
Ooh, very nice. That's I don't think that's optimal. It's a really nice format where each of the individual games can be very important. Yeah, they all match. That goes like the first one I said. What's the EX dash punch on block? They changed it. They swapped it with the EX dash low uh, crush smash, dash low smash. They swapped the frame data of two of his EX dash punches, but I forget which one became more safe and which one became more unsafe. I think EX dash punch was like minus one. It was either minus one or minus four, and the other one was either minus four or minus one. I think that was it. I like want to see Shen Yun. I wrote Shadaloo Showdown. That's when I believed in my cross. Or rather, it was a previous Shadaloo Showdown. Actually, it might have been that particular one. That's it. No, it's not. Ultra. Oh god, dude, this one's Ogre. EX straight minus 2, EX upper minus 1, EX upper you can duck, so that one's not super relevant. EX low minus 3, EX swing minus 5, EX low smash minus 3. I think they, s I don't know, all those look close. Maybe they just fixed the frame data on one and they didn't swap. I don't remember. That's not too bad though, on any of those. The only thing I can think about with far light kick, I don't know if it like counter pokes Yon's buttons that well. I probably wouldn't fuck around with it. But it's definitely good if he's jumping in. We were talking about what Kazu said matchups were just a minute ago, and that was not on the list. Look at that punish. Crutch jab stand short. GG. Did someone say Shen? I mean, I don't know. I didn't fucking. I just read it. Oh, Ken was one of them. 
as Ken Cigar. Oof. Elena. What was the other one? Lefe or something? I played um, Ken versus Yon. It's alright. I don't feel like I'm at it some huge deficit. Ken versus Yon. It feels okay. Ooh. Tricky to see. I sound hella high. No. Oh, we bought. I'm not sleep deprived, what the fuck? Oof. Ken has a lot of different ATOs, and they have different ranges. Speaking as a Ken main, it's not like you can just ATR with hard DP always, or even ATR with medium DP always. But talking about ATRing with like hard DP, with Kara hard DP on a neutral jump, that's tricky. That's harder than most characters' ATOs. And that's a neutral jump you have to recognize as being different from like a forward jump. And you also have to recognize that Yun can do a dive kick or not do a dive kick. And you need to consider that when doing your ATOs. Crouch Hard Punch has virtually no range. It's taller and less thick than other Shoto Crouch Hard Punches. I shouldn't say other Shoto because I think Akuma's is even taller and even narrower. But like jab DP early or late are both good anti air options. Crouch face is a good anti air option if they're gonna go over your head. So is early light DP, but not late light DP. Um, anti no any character. It's it even just based on the range. Ken has like four different anti airs. Like even if it's just a, a character with a single jump arc and no way to alter that jump arc, he still got like four different things he can do. Ryu like usually uses medium. He can use hard. But like 80% of the time you'll see a medium DP anti from Ryu because it doesn't have a significant range loss. It's actually like identical range, medium to hard, but medium has better invincibility. Which means you can use it at more different timings and still have it work. This is a game with a decent amount of catch-all anti -airs. Might work. Nope. There were like five characters, give or take, who can super into Ultra, and Gens was the best. Rose could do it. Uh, Ken can do it. Um, Gal can do it. Uh, there's probably a couple more.
I don't think I ever saw a Rose do it, despite the fact that like it's not so rare to see a Rose Super. And it's not so rare to see a uh, Rose pick Ultra 2. But any successful Super with Rose, you can do an Ultra 2 and have the two walls struggle. Yeah, Ryu. Ryu's kind of sucks. Ryu gets a really weak Ultra after a Super. Ken and Guile and Rose get full damage Ultras. And so does Ken. I should have had Gush later. Depends on the character. If I recall correctly, Ryu Super is only um, only plus five on block, and Ultra is slower than that. You can't jump out in that window, but you can wrestle out. Exact plus frames. I remember plus five. I remember having a hard time even getting the tree block string into DP. Oh, power! I think real ultra one is eight. That range! That went so far! Plus 11, shit, it's that much. I'm surprised both of those are that high. I mean, Chun Li is literally Chun Li literally has to Chun Li has to make literally the the hardest anti-air decisions of any character. That doesn't make Ken not technical. He just literally picked like the character who has to think the hardest about what anti-air they do. I can't think of anyone who has a fucking more technical decision than Chun Li. There are a lot of characters who just do crouch fierce and that's that. Like Balrog. Like Sakura. Like Goken. Hi. I'm doing okay. I work tomorrow. I'm like not fussed about working. I've had a bunch of days off and I like I could get used to this. DJ's anti is good, he just needs the opponent to be really close. Or maybe not really close. He just needs down charge. If he doesn't have down charge, his anti-air is like the worst in the whole game. If he has down charge, it's quite good. It's like upper end. Oof. As someone who played Evil Ryu, Ryu and Ken, I would say um, ugh, it was hard to prevent that. I would say that Ken is the one with the least catch-all medium DP of the three. And it's because the medium DP had the most range of the three. It was more pract It was more possible to go under. 
or get one hit only. Ken has like good anterior options compared to most of the cast. They're definitely like like amazing. He's got like borderline like top top ten. He's got top ten anti-airs, Okay, he's easy top ten anti-airs. Maybe top five anti-airs. But um, he has a decision. He has a decision making process that I feel like most characters have way easier. Speaking as a former Ken main. It's okay. I don't know if I'd call it one of the best. If you autocorrect it, it works, but so do his other D two DPs in autocorrect scenarios. And light light DP autocorrect is easier to get and also leads to more damage. Oof. I always did light DP anti cross up. If it trades, you get EX Fireball. And if it doesn't trade, you might actually still get EX Fireball. And it has less chance going under. You can do it sooner. Technically speaking, if you do hard DP and get first hit, and then second hit, how did it work? I forget. It was first hit, first hit, then second hit, and then F A D C. You got a full connect ultra, but you would almost never get first hit. You'd usually get only second, and then only like only second and third. It was crazy, crazy difficult to get a three hit anti air can hard DP. Not a thing you could really do. If second hit's the launching hit, it's JP1. If first hit is the launching hit, then it's JP0, which is free juggle state. Plus the second hit, even if you do it, um, doesn't add to the juggle state, so it stays JP0. Took me a little while to figure out how that's how it worked. But now I understand it. I didn't know that was a rule. Once I understood that was a rule, it all began to make sense. Is that you can have hits that normally cause if they cause a juggle they add JP, but if they continue a juggle they don't add JP. It's both of them. Both of these statements are true. First hit airborne is free juggle, and first and second hit uh, is free juggle. But if it's second hit only, it's not free juggle. Even though hard DP had invincibility, um, the fact that it only ever got two hits is an anti-air, and medium DP would always get its only two hits as an anti-air, meant that medium DP was almost always stronger. Is that a punish? Oh my god. PR Rog is the best. <gasps> no. No. Planning to do. I'm not planning to do shit. I can play you in some third strike right now if you want. Do you have fight, Cade? I will literally put down everything and play some third strike. Alright, I'm in.